The Rancor's Brothel presents The Curse of Strahd. <laughs> First off, audience, hello. Welcome to We've Had Secret Episodes. I'm officially referring to this in my mind as the double secret episode. <laughs> <laughs> because no one knows we're doing this. When I said uh, two weeks ago that we were playing our last game of 2016, I was a liar, liar, pants on fire. So this evening, uh, Jeff and I talked about it, and Jeff really wants to save Davin. And I've got no problem with that. It's his character. And so we sort of come up with a here's what the hell has happened to Davin session. Uh, we have no idea how this is going to end. We have no idea when this episode will be played. We are playing this, and if suddenly Davin is dramatically revealed, this will be the very next week's episode, or two episodes, whatever it may be. If we come to find out that it is not that way, um, when they walk across poor Davin's corpse, then we'll play this episode. So (laughs) uh, We literally have no idea what's going on. We don't know where we're going, so this should be exciting. Are you good to go, Jeff? It still feels like a dental visit. I, 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 I'm dreading this. I really, but I, I've been so excited to do it, but I'm dreading it. And that's what I really liked about your, your description. It's like, it's like a visit to the dentist. It needs to be done. It needs to be getting over with. And you may be happy afterwards. Or you may be like every dentist appointment I had as a child. I vomited. So <laughs> you can leave a bad taste in your mouth. So we'll see what happens. If um, I vomit, I will vomit all over you. Fair enough. <laughs> um... So, we'll rewind a little bit. So, sort of to retcon just the last little bit to make sure everything connects together. You sort of have this weird uh, hallucination as you're losing consciousness of, I believe I said it was a woman. It should have been a man reaching out, you know, trying to trying to touch Davin and then a single tear rolling down his eye and then you sort of blacked out. Um, the next few moments are chaotic. Um, you... You detect motion. Lots of things are happening. You you feel jarred and disjointed and your head's in a fog, but you're spinning and you see see the night sky and you see trees and you you, you feel the rush of air on your face. And it's all all very dreamlike. You're not sure what's real and what's not. And then you, you get the sense that you see a large, looming, impressive structure, some sort of castle perhaps that may or may not be on the top of a, the side of a mountain um but you're not really sure you sort of um like i said it, it's all in and out it's all fuzzy and you're not sure what's exactly yeah. it, it doesn't make any sense um suddenly you feel a you feel wet and you feel pain and you're still very groggy it's it, it doesn't make any sense but you feel yourself you're you're sort of at an awkward angle And you're hearing things and you feel pain. You feel pain on your back. You feel pain on your ribs. You feel cold. The hair on the back of your neck is risen up because you're so cold. Um, You hear lots of splashing of water. Yeah, we'll give you a a perception check. Why not? I I like getting the die rolled early. Jeff is not even ready to go. (laughs) I've been sitting here waiting to play and I didn't even get my dice out. I was so... Focused on asking you questions and getting vague answers. and <laughs> What else do you expect from me? I mean, that's... <laughs> well, yeah, I know. Uh... It's kind of how I roll. Yeah, I know. I, I fully expected it. But... <laughs> uh, 17. Um, so Davin realizes you're actually suspended by chains. Oh, super. Uh, yeah, you're, you're kind of up in the air a little bit. Uh, you can't really, it's weird, you you know, it's, I don't know if you ever had a head injury or not, but you can focus on some things, but not others. Mm-hmm. You can tell this room is massive. This room is like. Am I upright or am I upside down? You are, you are upright. You are, you are uh, oriented. Held by both hands? Yes. Oh, God. <laughs> um, and you, 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 like I said, you're having a real hard time focusing. But what you know about this room is that the room is flooded. Like, there's, like, maybe... You're not even sure how much, but there's definitely... Like, every time these forms that you can't really focus on move around, you're hearing splash, 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 splash. 
Which is okay. odd, but like I said, this room is, this it's almost got, it's got more than a vaulted ceiling. The room itself is probably 20 or 30 feet tall, probably 50 foot square. And as you're kind of looking off in the distance, you can see a balcony, like an observation deck for this room. That's sort of weird. And then one of the forms who you're pretty sure has been yelling at you this time, the entire time, sort of takes on the look of someone familiar like i said it's all it's all fuzzy it's hazy and you're like oh that's a dragonborn you know who this is this is your friend and at about that time you feel you hear some louder screaming that you can't quite make out and you feel excruciating pain um to the tune of how many hit points you got right now we don't even know do we i was unconscious so you've been revived What's your total hit points right now? 56. We'll put you up at half. Uh, we'll look at 15 damage. Jesus. Um, as you feel excruciating pain in um, your right arm, um, suddenly you're not held up Suspended. by a chain yeah. anymore. You, you, you wobble. Damn it. <laughs> and you're like, what? do you look? I don't think I need to. Yeah, yeah, you don't need to. But I will take like a not a fort saver die, but I will take a uh, <laughs> a uh, holy crap! I just lost my f-ing hand roll. Yeah, what's what's the roll? Uh, we'll make it a what is constitution it? I, save or what? let's do a wisdom the wisdom saving throw first. Okay, twelve. I, I I'm just gonna say at this point you start there's screams. Some of the like after the scream goes on for about thirty seconds, you realize it's your scream, mm-hmm. and eventually you just black out. Okay, so that's fun. Yeah, I knew that was gonna happen. The second that I said I want to tattoo one on my a holy symbol <laughs> on my hand, I knew I was gonna lose that hand. <laughs> I looked at you and I said, Jeff, that's fine. Just be careful about that. Yeah. So you you wake up. Uh, You're cold, shivering, wet, like very wet. We'll say you wake up. In fact, you probably wake up choking. Uh, And you're freezing and you're cold and you, and you, and you, you, you sit up and you are in several feet of water, like maybe foot and a half, two feet. Okay. Um, You find yourself in a cell. Um, The cell of this particular dungeon is... Like, as you look around, it's it's probably two feet underwater. Like, it's unpleasant. Um, awesome. So you find yourself in a pretty solid 10 by 10 cell, and you sort of come to. Um, is this where I was before? No. This is something very, very different. You are, you are, this is small. This is a small enclosed okay. jail cell type feel. Um, you know, I was going to say, is the hand lay in there? <laughs> No, but as you look, you most definitely have a stump. Yeah. Um, Tended? Uh, cauterized. Oh, Jesus. Somewhat painfully, it looks yeah. like. It's, I mean, you've got probably second degree burns on your elbow. It was done. Oh, they painful. took it all the way to the elbow? Oh, no. I mean, sorry. At your wrist. They took okay. It, they took it, because your tattoo does go up your arm a little oh, bit, no, doesn't it? Oh, no, no. Oh, is it just solely Just the hand? palm of the hand. All right. So you've lost probably an inch or two of wrist. Okay. Um... It's like, Jesus, I can't even wear a shield. <laughs> no, there's still enough stump there left for the shield. <laughs> Mechanically, what I've decided is that um, we're going to take away um, probably minus two to your decks until you get used to the fact that you don't have a hand there. And then just random disadvantages when you grab, leap, jump. Because <laughs> it's going to take you a while to remember that you don't have a hand. There. Yeah. So. Okay. That's fun. <laughs> um, so yeah, all you can see is straight ahead. There's a cell across from you, iron gate or iron, you know, iron barred door, slatted, you know. Just uh, the two cells, or uh, as you approach, are you, I say you sort of a row, wading your way over there. Sure. As you wade your way over there, you can't quite tell. You can see obviously across from you better than you can side to right. side. It appears that there are a number of cells. Um, it looks like you can see. Three more, maybe? You think it's probably four or five. You can't obviously see all the way down. Okay. You'd say as best you can tell there are at least four cells. So you assume if it's mirrored, then there are a total of at least eight cells. It may go farther than that. That's all you can see. Okay. 
Um, Am I just hanging out here, or is anything going on? Nothing's going on. All you hear is the lapping of water. Like moving water, or? No, just sort of a... Just flooded. Yeah. No, okay. you, you can sort of hear, like, it's a... It's not like rushing water or anything, but obviously you walk around, and you hear it slap, and then it, the, the ripples slap against the wall, and then it moves, and it looks like the door is... The door, because you can see to your right, actually, is what looks like the door out of this room. And it seems to be very heavily pressed with water as well. Um, uh, and let's, sure, let's go ahead and make a, another perception roll while you're at it. Uh, Eleven. As far as you can tell, you appear to be alone. Looks like there may be... There's a bit of light in the cell across from you. You can't quite tell what it is. It's small. Um, unknown. Um, that's all you can see is you kind of look at the other cells. You're not seeing, you know, you're not seeing other prisoners. You're not seeing corpses. You're not seeing anything. Okay. No cries of anguish. Or... Right. It, other than the soft lapping of water and you moving around, you're hungry. Uh, you're down to just basically your tunic, you know, whatever mm. you had on you. Right. Um, Okay. Just you and your five fingers. <laughs> okay. Um, anything? Can I feel around under the water around, around the around my cell? Is there anything that might be useful? Um, do, 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 um, you have dark vision, don't you? Yes. Okay. So it is pitch black in here. Like, awesome. No light. Um. You find that uh, it's about 10 foot high. Um, ceiling is covered in mold. Um, there are probably the remains of wood in a bed that were there at some point. But at this point, it's, I mean, how long does it take for wood to dissolve? You know? Yeah. I, I mean, know. it's it, it is what it is. It's essentially a, a 10 foot square cell, iron bars, um, everything sort of dimly lit. Um each each door is fitted with an iron lock. You can't actually see a physical lock on the other side of the. So the doors themselves are um, uh, hinged door made up of one inch thick rusted iron bars spaced four inches apart with hor- with horizontal crossbars. Um, is this just the door? Or is this the walls? The walls are stone. Okay. You've got stone to the left. You got if you're looking out the door, you've got stone to the left of you, mm-hmm. so you can't look into the, your yep. neighbor's cell. Stone to the right of you. Stone to the rear. And then you've got sort of your classic barred door. Yeah, barred door with um, um, you're not walled in on the front either. It's the same thing. So you've okay. got tightly tight bars for the door, and you've got slightly looser bars around the edges. Okay. What would you like to do, if anything? I guess I'll check out the lock. Uh, it appears to be a large iron lock. Good and sturdy, or rusted through. Give me a. I hate to be the same, playing the same note over, but that's probably a perception. And let, there, you have an investigation in this skill, don't you? Mm-hmm. Might be investigation. Nineteen. Um, it you it's it's not a complicated lock. It's something that could definitely be picked. It's also, like you said, is a bit rusted. It could be forced. The iron bars are not that weak. Um, the lock itself is a bit rusted. It would a good shove would do it, but it would have to be a pretty solid shoulder into it okay this is where the dm would like to know if you want to rest or if you want to try and push through i think i'm gonna have to rest seems legit how long are you intending to try and rest i don't know can i how can i within two feet of water i'm not that big um it's not perfect i mean it's not a perfect i mean water lays level but there's some there's some things about this i'm messing with the dungeon a little bit so let's put it that way so okay. since I'm messing with it anyway, if there there is a corner perhaps that you can pull yourself up to and there's some rusted bits of a bed, you could sit down and, you know, if someone threw you in here in two feet of water, you would drown in two feet of water. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So you would, you there's a place clearly okay. where you can be, a shelf right. or something. Yeah, I'll rest. Okay. Uh, are you attempting to take a long rest or a short rest? Because at this point, I'm going to assume since you haven't had a good night's rest, your spells are bupkis. No. Oh, you still have some? Yeah, I only used two spells. Oh, did you? So at this point, you're left with whatever you have. Although I do think I read in the book that if you meditate for a certain amount of time, 
you can oh no sorry that's to change your spells you can meditate to change your spells midday I think oh no I didn't know if I was going to have like the Strahd visit and I <laughs> <laughs> I mean essentially your options are to attempt to pick the lock with no tools which is not going to be easy at all yeah you, you've got nothing to work with you can attempt to force the door which you think you could do but it would not it would be very hard to do Mm-hmm. Or you could take the time to take a rest. And I haven't regained any hit points. Uh, no. I will take a short rest. Okay. And eat ice cream. All right. You take your short rest. Nothing appears to have changed in that amount of time, so you can go ahead and uh, boost your hit points. D8. In I'll give you an extra. Five D8. Yeah, I'll give you an extra. I'll give you a couple extra there. Just from simple the fact that your body was resting, so you can add two to whatever you roll. Two to the total? Yeah. How many you decide to roll? Mm-hmm. Looking a little better. At the same time, you must recall that uh, it was absolutely Bozak that swang the, mm-hmm. the axe, though. Vaguely something about only this will make you understand how helpless you are. We're all prisoners. All these words are sort of coming back to you as you're sort of sitting there trying to rest and recuperate. She was trying to get you to stay where Irina and the rest of the group are. Trying to get you on board. But as you sit there and think about it, it, it's descended less from logical arguments to almost mad, incessant ravings. Childish in a way. You have to see this way. This is the only way. You may have tried to respond, but no response you could have given was fast enough, was right enough. And you have to come to terms with the fact that Tribalist Bozak is... Probably horribly mad at this point. Not angry, just batch insane. Yeah. So perhaps you do question the validity of her arguments as you uh, sit there in foot and a half, two feet of water, trying to rest. She's in there doing this while I'm... No. Oh. This is just coming back to me? Yeah, it's just been... It's been an hour, you know, you've rested. These thoughts are just sort of coming back to you, you know? Just sort of like when you get that bump on the head, sometimes some things come back, some things don't. Mm-hmm. So your rest is up. Let's try and break down that door. Or force it, whatever. Uh, roll me a... Strength check. Yeah. Athletics? Uh, I think it just wants straight strength check. Okay. I will cast Guidance. Fifteen. It's more solid than that. Jesus. Yeah. Like I said, you, it's, you hit it now, and you're like, mm, "I, you could do it, but it's gonna, it's gonna take a a, a real good shot." Something I can try again. Yeah. After that, do I hear any noise coming? So you kind of put your shoulder down and clang. Perception check. Nope, you don't hear anything. That's a one. Try it again. You hear an ice tr- cream truck on its way. Okay. Hit it again. Way worse. And I'll listen again. 14. Jeff, you really need to start rolling double-digit numbers, buddy. I know. <laughs> Jesus. This is not looking well for Davin. Um, you, you hear a whisper or a flutter, maybe. And then you hear splashing. Slow, methodical steps. Yep. Splash, 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 splash. And as uh <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, right. Did you... I just had a really Matt idea, but <laughs> you know, you can we all need to listen to our inner Matt sometimes. How quickly could Devin shit himself? <laughs> <laughs> um rolling no, I'm constitution jo- I'm joking. check, I guess. <laughs> Draw the holy symbol on the wall and <laughs> use it by any means necessary. You see a form standing in front of the uh, in front of the cell. Mm-hmm. Um, what kind of form? A form that looks a lot like a statue you saw way back when you first got here. High widow's peak, strong jawline, bit of a cape. Yeah, perhaps Bella Lugosi esque, if you will. Okay, you see. You see this individual reach and grabs the lock and pulls and just crushes the thing. Yeah. Um, and then you see he's got something else in his hand. He's kind of got a 
sort of tucked behind him. You can't quite tell. But um, he swings open the gate, and then as he sets it down, you realize it's a small stool. Well, actually kind of a taller stool. Yeah. You know? And you see the uh, individual sort of perch himself up on the stool. He kind of just, you know, right inside the gate. It sits down. Good evening. Howdy. Welcome, priest. <laughs> I hope you have not been treated uh, too unjustly. Uh, and by I'll your... look at the stump. Yes, it does... It does seem, uh, it did seem that you perhaps might need a hand, so I thought I'd come down and see how you were getting along. Mm Mm-hmm. Why am I here? I didn't figure I'd wake up. She was perhaps too forceful, too violent. She went too far. I forced her to stop for now. (laughs) You didn't send her back to us to kill us? He shakes his head slowly. She did these things of her own accord. There are many, many comfortable places elsewhere in the castle for you to sleep. Should you choose to be my guest, you may sleep much more comfortably. You needn't stay down here in the muck, priest. Contrary to what you may think, I I respect your noble cause. I think it is foolish, and it is misguided. You have fortitude that many of your fellow adventurers do not show. I would be honored to have you as a house guest. As I said, I was very disappointed when Bozak did what she did. Yeah, is that what happens to your house guests? Hmm. What happened to Bozak? I would have much preferred to have had a glass of wine, to have sat down, to have discussed things with you. No, I mean with Bozak. Bozak is, is, Bozak is very angry. Too angry. It fuels her. Yeah, but she's not the same Bozak she was when she left us. Are you so sure? Yeah. Hmm. Everything that has occurred to Bozak, that has occurred to Bozak, has been her choice. I have done nothing. So this isn't a join up or die speech? No. No? Like I said, I I appreciate your noble cause. I have known many. Some of my... Some of the people I have most admired in my life have been priests. As I say, I believe you are simply misguided. That is through no fault of your own. You have unbelievable fortitude and dedication. I respect and admire that. The two strongest people in the world are soldiers and priests. So how am I misguided? You believe in a god who no longer listens to you. You follow a path that goes nowhere. At best, it goes in circles. At worst, it leads you off the edge of a cliff. Which god do you think that is? Because Lathander still speaks to me. At this point, he narrows his eyes and looks very closely at you and gives you a half smile. He says, does he? You have spoken to him recently. I speak to him daily. Mm. He still gifts me with his powers. For now, how long have you been in this place? I think we figured it out. It's like two and a half weeks or something like that. Something like that. Soon, even that small connection will fade. Speaking of which, why am I here? Bozak wished to speak with you. No. I mean in this land. Perhaps you were both... Misguided in your religion and misguided in your following of maps. Uh, no. I followed the letter that was sent to us. Hmm. By whom? The handwriting seemed very similar to yours. Perhaps you were even more clever than I gave you credit for, priest. It has been... As you see him, he, he licks his teeth as he looks up and thinks about it. It has been some time since I have encountered... One so clever and resourceful, it wounds me that you are in the cell. You are here by... Well, what would you think, priest? Divine intervention? Your god did not protect you from this, so surely you must be on the right path, yes? I I feel that my god led me here. To a place where no gods speak. I don't believe that. Good. You shouldn't. But your god has no power here. Few, if any, have power here. Perhaps none. Remains to be seen what you will discover. Okay, so what do you want? I am ruler of this land. Gathered that. Hmm. I believe in fairness. I believe in just and swift punishment. And what on earth have I done to deserve punishment? Nothing. This is why I'm here. I am the land. I've heard that. I am its people. I am its ruler. I believe you have been treated unjustly. And he sort of indicates the open door behind him. 
you're free to go. <laughs> in fact, if you wish, you are free to seek out vengeance. I think that could perhaps be justified, if you so desire. But you're free. As I said, if you wish to stay as a guest, I would most humbly welcome you here. If you choose to leave. And again, he just sort of nods towards the door. Or at my things. Mm. He sort of thinks about it. Again, Bozak did things that I did not approve of. I am not quite sure where all your things may be. <laughs> uh, he says, down the hall, <clears throat> to your right. They would most likely be there. Okay, where's Bozak? He sort of just generally glances upward and then looks back at you. Okay. What is this place? Not not the castle. What is this land? It is mine. It has been and it will be. Always and forever. By choice or are you stuck here too? He just sort of half smiles again. You know what I have not met very often? A funny religious man. You have great humor. That you should not you should never forget that bit of humor. What was funny? Just in general, I think that you are uh, an amusing individual. As I said, I believe that your hand was taken unjustly. Uh, I believe you've been imprisoned unjustly. And you may feel that these things were done in my name. Therefore, I've released you. And while I cannot give you your hand back, I will do the best I can. And you see him sort of reach behind him, and he tosses something to you. Okay. Catch it? It's soft. Soft like... Just sort of a seems sort of soft. Actually, I don't remember. Anyway, uh, what you end up catching as you realize as you hold it is something that you used to have. I just don't remember if it was a dummy or a sock puppet. A ventriloquist dummy. <laughs> the one I got at Blinsky's. Yeah. Yeah. So I cannot uh, cannot restore your hand, but perhaps I can give you something to put the stump to good use. Uh, now, if you excuse me, as I said, I must... And you notice he suddenly... Obviously, he's enjoying his rhetorical banter. You see him suddenly stop. And for the first moment, I mean, his his eyes are, are black and piercing. And he's been staring at you this entire time. And, you know, even in his half-smiles and his sort of looks, you've been the focus to see it this entire time. And for the first moment, he turns his head to the side and completely... You're gone for this instant. So he looks to the side and sort of stares off into the distance looking at something a million miles away. I apologize for my rudeness, priest, but I must excuse myself. Should you like to stay, please be my guest. Otherwise, feel free to leave. I'm sure we will speak else. Uh, I was sure we will speak at another time. And with that, he turns and steps out of the cell and you hear splash, splash, splash. Squeak, squeak, flap, flap. <laughs> you, you just hear splash, 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 and then nothing. Okay. That's not what I expected. <laughs> what did I tell you about this game? Always keep them guessing? Yeah. Okay. So my cell is open. Yep. Okay. There's a wooden stool in your way now, but I'm sure that you can move that relatively easily. Yeah. I'm going to check out that cell across from me where I saw the light. Okay. You do, in fact, see that there are uh, eight cells. Okay. You also notice with a bit of a shock that there is absolutely no door in the direction he went. Awesome. Is there a door out? There is a door to your right out. He walked away to the left from whence he came. He just appeared to have vanished. Yeah. Um, as you go across the hall, uh, you see, in fact, it appears to be a... Uh, what's your passive perception? You, I mean, you've got good perception. Mostly. 15. It's You see what appears to be a glowing sword. Okay. Is the cell locked? Uh, yeah. They're all locked. Awesome. Let's try this. 20. I'll give it to you. You, I'll say, you probably took the time to maybe, uh, you know, <clears throat> grab the stool or something, give yourself a bit of leverage, but mm -hmm. you pry it open. Cool. You see, a glowing blade can be seen beneath the water near the back of the cell. Okay. Um, what color is it glowing? Um, or is it just light? Yeah, dealer's choice. Okay. I mean, it's not some menacing red or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> no. 
Okay. Looks more like Luke's lightsaber than Darth Vader's lightsaber. More of a soft blue or green, <laughs> something pleasing to the eye. Okay. Um. And it's just laying there. Mm-hmm. What would I need to be able to identify it besides an identify spell? What are you looking for? I don't know. It is a short sword. I'll tell you that much. Oh, um, okay. Well, in what way are you trying to identify? It's it? glowing. I, I'm assuming it's something magical. Yeah, just looking at it, you're assuming that it's a magical sword, right? Uh, arcane, I guess. I I don't know of any other skill that's useful. I don't know. And I mean, even that's just not that's not going to give you. You know what I mean? Because really, you probably. I'll pick it up. Okay. Are you right-handed or left-handed? Uh, I was... I'm just wondering if you try to pick it up with your stump first. <laughs> no, the stump was on the shield arm. Okay. Because I had the the holy symbol on that one, so I okay. could still hold a weapon. Um, as you pick it up, you feel happy. Happy. Yeah. Like euphoric happy, or like you haven't seen <laughs> you haven't seen a relative in a long time happy. Like, this is good. I feel good. Except then you get to that thought of I, and it's not really an I. It's not really a we. Like, this is good. This is a good thing. Oh, f- We're going to do so much good. <laughs> Hang on a minute. <laughs> God damn it. We've only looked into two cells. Yeah, the first f- cell, I find an intelligent sword. And I don't know if it's back. Bad- Crazy. Damn it, Cody. Mm-hmm. Would it be metagamey for me for Devin to puzzle out what this is? Uh, as far as what do you mean? I think this is an intelligent sword. Uh, I'm going to assume that Davin has had some dealings with magic before, and you get that sense. You may have never owned an intelligent before, and so is your thinking. You get more feelings of happiness. This time it's not ecstatic joy, but just general good feelings. Okay. You're not hearing a voice. It's emotion. Okay. (laughs) Okay. How would I do this? And as you pick it up, you realize that the glow is actually pretty good. It's at least a 15-foot radius, and maybe it's almost a 30-foot lit radius. It's 15 feet of dim light after that. So you're lighting up quite a bit. Okay. Happy for yes, sad for no. Can you understand me? You get a ping of happiness. Okay. All right, don't freak out. I got to try something. And I set it down. You set it down. (laughs) Thank God. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) And I pick it back up. Confusion? Sadness? Don't worry, I just had to make sure that I could let it that I could set you down. You get more confusion, but it seems to accept it. Okay. It's just very happy. You get more feelings of euphoria, like very happy. What are you doing here? Well, I guess I can't really ask it that. Um Have you been here long? Uh, you get a slight tinge of happiness, but it it's Uncertain. Okay. It's not... You can kind of feel like it, it It really kind of is either on with emotion or off with emotion. And you can feel like it's giving you like 5% of what it can give. The euphoria was like oh, overwhelming to you. This okay. is like very soft. Like... Mm. Okay. Would I be able to hear it already? Uh, right. Roll Arcana. Actually, let's, let's roll your religion. Oh, that's not any better. Nope. You kind of remember being taught that it sometimes it takes time, sometimes it doesn't. You really don't have much insight into it. Uh, okay. But I know what attunement feels like. Yes, you would know that. So if you're asking if you feel attuned to it, no. It feels very foreign to you. Okay. All right. Do you oh, know... wait. Hold on a second. Huh? As you think about that... You're attuned to it now. I mean, this has only been like seconds, hasn't it? Yeah. And you get double beeps of happiness again. Kind of like Herbie the Love Bug. Beep, beep. Okay, then what is it? It is a plus one lawful good short sword. Oh. <laughs> that apparently attunes to a lawful good creature in one minute. 
Uh, I had forgot about that when I read this section. Um, you now can catch... And just for anybody listening who didn't catch what happened at the end of our first secret episode, my alignment shifted to lawful good. It's a good point. Thank you. Yes, you did shift to lawful good. Um, uh, um, what else was I going to say? Uh, you can now... The sword can cast Crusader's Mantle once a day. I don't know that spell. I don't either, but I bet it's cool. <laughs> um, and actually, I'll go ahead and give you the stats since you're attuned to it. In addition to being a level one short sword, or a plus one short sword, um, it has Int of 11, Wisdom 13, oh. and Charisma 13. And did we look up what Crusader's Mantle does? I was about to. So, I mean, it's essentially as intelligent as an, as an average individual, but yep. it, you can tell it communicates only through emotions. Okay. And it is euphoric at the fact that you now are attuned to it. Because now you can tell it can give you a bit more complexity of emotion, but... Holy power radiates from you in an aura with a 30-foot radius, awakening boldness in friendly creatures. Until the spell ends, the aura moves with you, centered on you. While in the aura, each hostile, each non-hostile creature in the aura, including you, deals, deals an extra 1d4 radiant damage when it hits with an attack. A weapon attack. That's cool. Yeah. Not much help right now, but that's cool. <laughs> um, so yeah, it sort of... Neat, neat. A pleasure. <laughs> Sweet. You know the way out of here? <laughs> um, puzzlement. Like I said, it, it, it's hard to convey. It, right. it doesn't talk. It's only through emotion, so... All right. I will... I know that there's going to be something bad in one of these cells. <laughs> I will walk down the aisle and look at each one. Okay. Almost all of them appear empty. In fact... Okay, so you came out of cell D. The sword was in cell H. Um, G looks empty. F looks empty. E looks empty. D looks empty. Um... B is slightly ajar. That's not ominous at all. <laughs> uh, C has a corpse in it. Fresh one? No. Um, and A... I keep forgetting, you have a glowing sword, don't you? Yeah. Um, both A and B, the floors of that cell are reflective. I thought there was two feet of water. There is. Under the water, something is reflecting. It looks like the whole floor almost. And for C, clinging to the bars of this otherwise empty cell is a rotting corpse of a male half-elf dressed in leather armor. Not anything that would fit me. Yeah, I mean, if we needed to make it work, you could you could put something on there to give yourself a little bit of protection. It's not going to be pleasant, but if you could get to it... Oh, fuck it. Um, I'll, poke, I'll poke the floor of the reflective with the sword. You, you feel it shift? And it's like the whole floor... Now you're looking a little closer. The floor looks... It's reflective, but it's kind of marbled almost. When you push it, it all shifts. And you get the sense that it's reflective because those are piles of coin. Okay. I don't have anything to carry coins. Um, Nope. Except the old dwarf trick with the rolled coins. (laughs) So yeah, that's sort of... Um, I'm heading out the door. Okay. So you go to the door. Is it open? It is not. I will check it. <laughs> sure. You gonna roll perception for me then? Yeah, and I'm gonna cast guidance. Eighteen twenty-three. It doesn't appear to be trapped, although it does appear to be leaking. Leaking. Yeah, like it. Sort of the seams and stuff. How kind of, high? Uh, I mean, you're at the door handle, and it's leaking at least that high. Like higher than the water level in here. Yeah. Fuck. Okay. Um. Try and open it. Uh, make me an athletics check. Fourteen. You pull it open, and as you pull it open, you feel a nice rush of water. Um, you expected it, so I'm I'm, I'm going to say that you pulled it in such a way that you are behind the door. Yeah, you're a little. You're you're okay. Um, the way that this room is set up is not easily understood in my mind. So, uh, there's an onrush of water, but you see that there are a couple of steps up, 
So this is sort of stairs up, just, you know, two steps. And then there appears to be a hallway. So as you open this up, the water surface is like dark mirrored glass disturbed only occasionally by the thwick of a drop falling from the ceiling. Uh, Arch doorways lead downward on each side of the hallway, as you see. Um, in the arch doorway that you came from, an iron door that you just opened, the other one stands closed and partially submerged. Um, you think you hear someone crying in the, in this direction. Um, this direction, as you come up the step, I'm assuming you come up the yeah. steps, right? So you're maybe there? Yep. Um, there. Um, as you look down here, you see this opens into a massive room. Uh... 40, 50 feet wide, maybe. You hear cries from help, and over here, there's a spiral staircase leading upward. You hear, I hear cries from help coming from behind the door? Uh, yeah. What kind of cries for help? You get sort of, oh, uh, Male, female? The masculine sounding. Okay. Now, where did Strahd say that my stuff would probably be? He told you to come out and turn, uh... Right? Turn to the right, so... He says he thinks it's down here, but he's not sure. Okay. I will go right first. Okay. Um, how much do you weigh, Jeff? Do we put a weight on there for you? No, there's not a spot for weight. Hang on. Let me find the average for a dwarf. Even just a rough guess is good. Because I'm not going to worry about encumberment and everything. 148 pounds. Wow. Okay. That sucks. <laughs> so, you begin walking this way. And right about here, uh, you're not quite sure. You're, you're somewhere in this direction as you're heading that. You feel the floor give underneath you, and you hear a loud whoosh of water, and then you're falling. And then you get dizzy real quick as is like something's happened to you, and you're not quite sure what. No kind of reflex or anything? No, nope, because they're ass. I guess. And uh, you splash down into a couple of feet of water, and you realize you are... Right back there. <laughs> you, uh, For those who can't see the map, Jeff has suddenly appeared back in the cell in which he found the sword. You get a couple beeps of sadness from the sword you're holding. <laughs> okay. You know, I really didn't want to start burning through spells yet. <laughs> I don't blame you. It felt as though, uh, thinking back on it, it felt as though a, perhaps a... a a pit clearly opened because you felt the rush of water. So something opened and you fell. But you fell and you never hit anything. You fell into this room. So okay. there's probably a combination of... Thinking back on there's a combination of probably both physical trap and magical trap that yeah. puts you here. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, give me a... You have insight, right? Insight yes. skill in this game? Alright, I get confused with that. Give me an insight roll. 16. Yeah, we'll say you think that that trap is about right here. I'm going to cast Find Traps. <laughs> 120 foot range from me. Holy crap, you find all the traps? You sense the presence of any trap within range that is within line of sight. A trap for the purpose this spell includes anything that would inflict a sudden or unexpected effect you consider harmful or undesirable, which was specifically intended as such by its creator. Okay. Are you... Where are you casting this at, and how long does it take effect? Are you going back out in the hallway? I'm going right back there where I started. Okay. And casting it there. Okay. Damn it. <laughs> is this whole place going to be like this? <laughs> I shouldn't need to ask that. <laughs> you detect... You uh, son of a bitch. <laughs> blame Chris Perkins. No, I blame you. <laughs> you Chris Perkins isn't here. <laughs> you detect uh, five traps uh, in this hallway. I don't know if it gives you any details on the trap or not, or it just detects traps. No, it just tells me spots to avoid. Okay. You should avoid all those spots. I will avoid all those spots and go to the right. So you're heading into... You're heading over here, yeah? Yes. Okay. Is, um, the, is there a door there? Is it open? Uh, I believe it's just open. Yeah, it just opens up into a significantly larger room. 
Okay, mission. then anything that I would have line of sight to in here, if there's traps, for 120 feet. I don't believe so. How long does that spell last? Do we know? That is instant. If it's there, I oh, know okay. it. No, there is there is not. Um, but you do you do learn the the general nature of the danger posed by a trap you sense. They are all trap doors. They all open and drop you. Okay. As you head towards that direction, I'm going to sort of stop you because you'd have to scooch around that one. That one's kind of in the middle. Yeah. Which I think is a real dick move. Um, dark, low shapes thrust up out of the still brackish water that fills this 50-foot square room, the ceiling of which is festooned with hanging chains that look like thick black web strands. A balcony set into the into the wall overlooks the room and has two large thrones atop it with a red velvet curtain behind them. So, and of course I had to draw that in such a way that... Um, As in creatures thrust up out of the water? No. It, okay. Things. Like, did, I, did it not say it in the description? It said shapes thrust up out of the water. Or did I... I got stuck on that. You have dark vision, don't you? Yes. How far? 60. The dark... Sh- it's because it continues because it says... Um, the ceiling is 17 feet above the surface of the water. The water is about three feet deep here. Um, the um, the balcony appears to be about 10 feet high. Because it says if the characters approach the dark low shapes, read. You you don't have to approach it because you can see it. Okay. You have dark vision. Well, plus you got 30 foot of light. So Yeah. The dark shapes in the water are racks, iron maidens, stocks, and other instruments of torture. Skeletons of, of the skeletons of their last victims lie within them, their jaws seemingly frozen open in silent screams. Okay, can I tell where I was? You've got a good guess. I'm looking for the hand. Three feet of water? Yep. Um, so this is a giant sort of ten foot high half circle. And then you can actually see at the top oh, the of the viewing room. Yeah. There are chairs and sort of a curtained off area. There are wow. no other entrances or exits. I know, right? Yeah. Okay. You think you were probably tortured in this area, maybe? Okay. But you're not quite sure. So I'll put you there. And I don't sense any other traps. No, sir. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to look for the hand. Okay. As you begin walking in this direction... Uh, you hear splashes in the water around you. Okay. And as you look to see, you see some of those things, uh, you see some of those skeletons begin to rise. And you see six skeletons pull themselves out of the water and start uh, moving towards you. Awesome. You want to get out the mat? <laughs> yeah. Damn it, Cody. <laughs> and these are... Oh, yeah, go check over there. Oh, Your no, stuff's me. probably there. Not, not skeletons. This may make you happier. It may not. You zombies. You're free to go. Your stuff's probably over there. You can go look. <laughs> you f***ing <laughs> ass. So we'll go ahead and roll that initiative. Even though it's going to be you and me. It's just a question of who gets to go first. Uh, 15. Okay. What is initiative? It's roll plus dex, dex. right? Well, they're zombies, so you go first. Cool. And I have no armor. Um, piss. Can I see any of my stuff? Uh, perception check? Twelve. <laughs> In the height of... Um, well, yeah. Height. At a quick glance, I don't notice. Yeah, at a, yeah I'm not going to take that as your turn. If you want to take your whole turn to look and then let them move at you, I'm assuming that's not what you want to do. No, it's not. So... It, at a quick glance, no, you don't see, you don't see anything. There are t- torture tables and things, you know, it's, like I said, it's under two, two and a half, three feet of water, so it's entirely possible it could be submerged somewhere. Yes. Okay, do these just look like zombies, or do these look like some kind of weird mutant zombie things? Um, the zombie has gray-green flesh that looks soft. I mean, it just looks like a zombie. Yep. God, I can't even cast that. <laughs> Any protection spells, pretty much. Sorry, it's just taken a minute. No, you're fine. You want to save Davin, and I think that that is admirable. But much as Strahd said, that that uh, noble, kind nature can get you killed, too. So, yep. I think I found a good reason to change your alignment, though. That sort of self-sacrifice is only what the most devout people do. Yeah. 
I said, you think over here somewhere, but you're not sure. Sacred flame at this one. Okay. Uh, ref- uh, is it a reflex save? A, de- a dexterity save. Well, that ought to work out real well. I'm hoping. That would be a one. For nine points of radiant damage. Nine points of radiant damage. You definitely call down radiant fire and roast its face, and it sort of twitches a little bit, but it still looks like it's going to start shambling towards you. Okay. Do you want to make any movement? Yeah, I'll back up to here. Actually, no, I will go one more. There's a trap somewhere over there. Is there? Yeah, you can go... You, yep, yes. I can go right there. You can go there, or you can go back one more. You can go back one more. There's actually a trap right here. Okay. Oh, but I know it! You do know that it's there. Will they trigger it? If they're heavy enough. I'm trying to think about what the weight of a zombie would be. Because it would be about the size of an average human individual. Yep. The average human individual is between 150 and 200 pounds, probably. Yeah. We'll go a buck 75 for you. We'll say the first one that shambles around the corner, he had a slight shorter distance. You see him step where that trap spot would be. Yeah. And he just vanishes. You, you, the, it seems as though, now that you get a chance to look at it, there's a trap door. The trap door opens, you hear a splash, and he seems to disappear, but you don't hear him hit the bottom. So you're thinking that he falls down and hits some sort of field or something that then teleports him. Okay. Um, but as it opens up, it opens up very quickly and closes very quickly. You see this next one step on it and nothing happens to it. Okay. Even though he's of the same size and shape as the next one. You would guess probably a reset, but you're not sure. Um, that's going to hit. Yeah. <laughs> That's going to hit. Oh, Jesus. Uh, I get three attacks? Does 11 hit? Uh, Shouldn't. Because it's no, 10 plus. No, no. It doesn't. Decks. So two hits. And yes, these zombies have multi-attack. Yeah, but three? Yep. 10 damage. As the one that finally gets up into your face, he bites into your flesh and he uh, tears into your stomach. Okay. Um, but he's the only one that makes it to you. All the others are lagging slightly behind, so it's your turn again. Okay. I'm going to use my standard action to take the dodge action. Okay. And I'm going to use my bonus action to cast Spiritual Weapon. Okay. And it will pop up right here and take a crack at the one. That's already had nine on it? Yep. Are you t- okay. So it's there. Um, go ahead and roll me an attack. Ten. You hit. Oh. Roll a little damage. Yeah, I'm trying to think what it is now. Should be Morningstar, isn't it? Well, it's whatever the spell says it is. Uh, Six damage. Uh, roll me a d20, please. Seventeen. Cool. Um. Why? What was that? You cut this one's head off, and that head plops down into that square. Okay. And you did a total of... You did another six to it, right? Okay. Okay. You Your spiritual weapon slices its head off. And you go, yeah! And then they all keep moving. Right. We'll have him come here. This one will come here. So the one whose head you cut off starts spinning around wildly. Okay. Swinging its claws. And it lurches because it knew you were there. But it has no idea where you are now. And it actually turns and hits its buddy. Um, okay. And claws the crap out of that one. And the one beside you is going to take his multi-attack. Disadvantage. It's fair. Took the dodge. You did take the dodge. Let me roll those. It's all plus three, so 12 does not hit. It's 12. Oh, 12 does hit. So that's one hit. That's really lucky because I rolled a 20 and yeah. a one. So there's a miss. And the third one is going to be... That's two crits on that die in a row. Uh, but unluck, that was not my uh, low number. Uh, so that's so you take one hit, so that's two damage. As they're all clambering in the hull trying to get at you. Okay. I will take the dodge again and hit with a spiritual weapon. Which one are you hitting? The one that you've cut its head off or the new one? Uh, this one. Okay. Yep, you hit. Yeah. Roll damage. 14 damage. Nice. Roll me a d20. 18. 
You cut another head off. Okay. And it's laying right there in the water beside it. Um, so that's good. Um, the hard part is, is I'm not really sure what these guys are going to do. I'll do that one first. He apparently really wants to attack his buddy. Um, <laughs> he keeps trying to walk that way and there's nowhere to go. That's a miss. Yes. And that is a hit. Six plus one. So he does another seven damage to this guy. Technically. <laughs> he cuts his own buddy's head off with his claws. Shears his head clean off. See how much I told you that there's all kinds of fun stuff going on down here? I guess. That head falls there. Uh, the other guy who can't do anything about a head, uh, he's going to attack at random. Uh, he moves into this spot. This one's going to move up. They really can't do anything at the moment. You're kind of... They're all... They all sort of have clumped together. Three of them have had their heads cut off now, and they're... Right. Sort of clumped together. So it's your turn. If I move back one, will I take an attack since it doesn't have a head? Neither one of them have heads, so they don't know where you're at. Right. So you ought to be able to take a step. Move back there. And Sacred Flame this one. Go ahead. Oh. Reflex, or four, dex save. That's minus two, so 17. Yeah, just barely. Does your spiritual weapon act? Yeah, as a bonus action. Uh, which one do you want to hit? This one. Okay. You hit. 15. Uh, roll me a d20. That one loses an arm in the water underneath it. Okay. <laughs> These guys turns. So let's... You decapitated a bunch of them, which sort of causes me problems, Jeff. This one meanders over here. Hey, his buddy's finally out of the way, so he can meander over there. The one sitting on top of your sword apparently seems to know right where you're at and streaks for you. <laughs> um, at disadvantage. Because I can't see. Yep. Uh, so that's an 18. Uh, that would be a 10. So only one hit. So he comes roaring across the hall. He's basically bouncing from wall to wall, swinging wildly, yeah. and he just happens to catch you for three damage. Okay. This one's missing an arm, so he can just step up. Um, so he can take two swings at you. He can take an arm. Nope. And he can take a bite. He hits with the bite for four damage. This one's going to try and wade through the crap here. And uh, this arm... You just happen to catch sight of it as it plops in the water and moves forward. What the fuck? <laughs> Your turn, Jeff. Okay. Um, dodge and spiritual weapon. Okay, which one are you going to hit with spiritual weapon? This one. Okay, go ahead. Nine? I'll give it to you with half damage. Because you still, I, they're so slow, you still hit them. Six and five is eleven, so five damage. Okay. Uh, roll me d20. Uh, that one loses a leg. Okay. Are you seeing the theme yet? And you're not moving? Like, you can't at this point, can you? I can. Yeah, screw it. I took dodge. Um, let's worry about these guys in a minute. These guys can actually move forward. So he's lost a leg, so he moves at half speed. Oh, okay. But... Percentage die because there's a trap there. No. I was going to say, is it there? Okay. It's. It looks like it's right in the middle. Okay. Because you're basically back to the doorways now. You've retreated that far. Oh. He seems to be standing right on top of the trap door. That's weird. Super. Um, let's see what happens to his buddy, though. His buddy can move up there. His buddy's gone. Whoop. That one appears to vanish into nowhere as you hear another kathunk. Okay. Um, these other guys are decapitated. The hand will move forward. So this guy moves in the direction of eight. So he run, comes over here and runs into the wall. That guy moves in the direction of one. That guy's still a D6 because he's in the hallway. That's a six. So he goes this direction. Um, so all you got is that one guy swinging at you. Okay. He's missing a leg. Yeah, he's missing a leg and, and an arm. arm. So that's a seven. Nope. And a nine. No. Alrighty. Now it is your turn. I will take the dodge action again. Mm-hmm. Move that up and attack with it. You hit. That'll hit. 
for 15. Um, that one goes down. Thank God. That one's gone. So now you're just left with the three headless zombies. Are you moving at all? No. Okay. Okay, so now all three of the blind ones are bounding about this hall aimlessly. Okay. My go? Uh, yes, sir. Spiritual weapon up to it. Mm-hmm. You hit. That sucks. For seven. Uh, roll me a d20. Thirteen. He loses an arm. Okay. Are any of these parts still moving towards me? Um, at this point, you can just see that there are heads in the water. And very creepily, the heads are going... They all are looking at you, though. Hmm. They still okay. see you. Standard action. Uh, sacred flame at this head. Sure. Uh, Not much of a reflex save. No, it, it's going to fail. For 15 damage. Uh, we'll say that was this one's head. You see that head go up in flame, and you hear a body go thump in the okay. water. You like how this game is played so far? <laughs> Once I figure it out. At this point, I'm assuming you should be able to probably dispatch Pick the them off. These. Yeah, I mean, unless one of them gets a really lucky random roll, but it's probably not going to. That one's now moving at half speed anyway. He's got eight, so he goes here. This one goes this way. So yeah, if you just want to rinse and repeat, just roll damage on the next head. Eight. Uh, okay. Eight. Which it's, one? We'll just say you just go to the next head, yeah. And you're okay. going to move up. And Spiritual move. weapon. I it can't really dodge. It's a head. So nine. Okay. We'll say that was this pair. Pop. They're dead. And, and yeah, I'll do you the same them. thing. Yeah. You can get them. Um, Holy so. hell. It's one f***ing room, man. <laughs> it's one f***ing room. Uh, I like those zombies. They're fun. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, It'd be better if I wasn't standing here unarmored and alone. <laughs> I'll give you I'll give you XP for all of them actually. Oh, uh, okay. You dealt with all of them. So 1200 XP. Mathematically speaking though, that should give you an idea of what sort of things you're looking at in this place. There's, there's, long story short, there's some dangerous in here, Jeff. You should watch. You better check yourself before you wreck yourself. Okay. I'm looking for my hand. Uh perception roll. Uh, I will cast Guidance. 19. Um, you don't see your hand right away, but you do see a pack that looks familiar. Okay. You go and get your pack? Yeah. Um. Any armor? Uh. Or a shield? <laughs> it's going to strap the shield to the stump? Yes. Um, I'm trying to think. What did you have? It, I... I'm going to assume that they took anything valuable, so weapons and armor are gone. Damn it. The pack is the pack is soaked, so anything that would get ruined by being wet is no bueno. And the scrolls are gone. Yes. The oh. scrolls are definitely gone. Bozak would have definitely taken the scrolls. She couldn't use them. No, but doesn't mean she wouldn't try. This is Matt we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag sorry, not sorry, Matt. Anything else of interest in here? No. Not really. I mean, if you wanted to take some chains or if you wanted to put a zombie in an Iron Maiden, then you look at some of the skeletons on the rack and be like, maybe I should just leave those there. Yeah. <sighs> okay, I'm going to go look in the door. Oh, you are? Cool. I hear somebody calling for help. I, you made me lawful good. You made yourself lawful good. Yeah, you let me. Yeah, because I knew I'd get to do fun things like this. So you open the gates to the other, which you can clearly tell now is a dungeon. It's it's more or less identical to the one that you woke up in. Um, a mold-covered ceiling hangs um, uh, above the still black water that fills this dungeon corridor. The water is several feet deep. Ten-foot square cells are entrances blocked by iron bars lined both sides of the hall. From one of the cells, you hear a gruff voice ask, Who's there? Somebody who's trying to get out of here. Yes. Yes, you're you're trying to get out of here. Take me with you. I can help. How's that? You're in the devil's strads. A home. No shit. You, th- you think you can survive it alone? 
No, but I doubt that I'm gonna. I doubt you're gonna be much help. If I can get out, I can get back in to, find, to come back for you. You, you can't. You can't leave me here. You're probably safer in there than out here with me. Who are you? Uh, my name is. My name is Emil. What are you doing in here? I was. I was. I was chased. Chased by direwolves, and then. And then something. They, they, they chased me down the road, and, and I had no choice but to run towards the castle. And now that I am here, I, I don't know. Something snatched me on the road. I, I, I don't know. I woke up here. Insight. He seems completely trustworthy. <laughs> <sighs> the damn thing rolls fine in combat. <laughs> Any skill checks, and it rolls ones or... Yeah, God. Do, are you going down there, or are you just hollering at him? I'll go down to where I can see him. Um, as you and go I'll past... Look, I'll, I'll look in the cells as I go. Um, cell H is empty. Uh, cell G, pounded into the roof of this cell, is a rusted iron pulley, strung through which a rope is tied to one of the cross beams of the barred door. Dangling upside down from the pulley is a man, flabby and stout to build, in tight-fitting leather armor. His boots are bound with rope just below the pulley. His fleshy hands are tied behind his back, and his head is underwater. He isn't moving. Um, on the floor, uh, beside uh, on the floor of the cell beside the hanging corpse is a smashed lyre. <laughs> um, in cell F, as you keep moving your way down, um, shackled to the back wall of the cell is an emaciated figure in a blue robe. Uh, it's spindly arms spread wide in front of its. Uh, head tilted forward. Long gray hair hangs in front of the dead man's face. In cell E, there's nothing. In cell D, which actually you would have seen that first. The lettering and the numbering is off a little bit. Um, you see the skeletal remains of a dead uh, dwarf lie uh, at the bottom of the cell enclosed in rusted plate armor. A usable battle axe stands nearby. But the armor doesn't look usable. It's rusted uh, It's rusted plate. If you put it on, I'd give you a little bit. You're not going to get all the armor bonus, but if you can get in there and put it on. And if you go all the way down, um, a strong young man cl- uh, clutches the bars of his cell while struggling to keep his teeth from chattering. His clothes are shredded, and he is soaked from head to toe. You say he's a balding man, um, very dark complexion. Dwarf, please, let me out. I can I can help you. We can, we can both escape this madness. I am sure of it. You are quite, quite strong. Obviously, I, I, I am strong too. Together with Emil, we, we, you, you and I, we can, we can make it out of here. I don't know how long I can survive without being let out. Yeah. Cast guidance. Do the same to the door that I did to mine. Damn it, Cody. Um, sixteen. Um. Maybe with him helping? Yeah. With him helping, he actually looks to be incredibly strong. He's an incredibly fit individual. Okay. Um, And so you're kind of pushing and prying, and he's grabbing a hold of the bars, and he's pulling, and eventually it snaps, and he's there with you. Thank thank you. Thank you, my friend. I'm I'm Emil. Thank you. Thank you for saving me. We must escape. Okay. You know how to use an axe? Uh, Yes, sure. I, I can use an axe. Yeah. Okay. Can I use the short sword to put, drag that battle axe over to where I can reach it? Um, uh, I'm, trying to, I'm just trying to get an idea of his, uh, his strength. Because he's like, I think, I think if, we, if we both pull, we, we may be able to force this door open. We can get this axe. And you see him go over and he starts pulling on the door. I couldn't reach it? Uh, well, I, I think that you could, pr- you could try and play around with it, but it might take you a few minutes. Okay. He, he's ready to go. He's okay. ready to get the hell out of here. Oh, he nat 20. Pre- he pre-rolled pretty <laughs> but you, you sort of go over there and sort of bang, and now you can get in there where the dead dwarf is. Okay. Um, all right. I'm not going to take the armor. If I have to stealth or anything like that, it's going to be completely useless. It's fair. Damn it, Cody. <laughs> no, I'm blaming you for this, because Matt's not here. <laughs> oh, and, uh, <laughs> and I'm waiting for him to turn on me. Fair enough. And I screwed something up here, but it's okay. We'll just, what? We'll, we'll go along there. There was supposed... I forgot you trapped all these zombies. So some of these zombies should be inside the cells. Oh. So 
in addition to a dead dwarf, there should have been a very live zombie attacking you, but we've already opened the door and given you the battle, oh, okay. so we're just going to let it go. I thought all of these traps linked to these. There's oh. a couple of them that link to these cells. Okay. You and Emil are standing there. He's got a battle axe. All right, so how can you help me get out of here? Well, it's better to be one. It's better to be two than one, yes? You, you don't know the, the way out. Uh, I mean, we are... He looks at the water. He's like, we must go up, yes? Yeah. Well, if we go up and we can... <laughs> I, I hate to tell you, Let's go. I don't know if you know Ravenloft, but the only options are to fall down the chasm, fall down the mountain, or to walk across the drawbridge. Let's go. Okay. Are you leading or are you making him lead? I will lead. Okay. Are you going up the spiral staircase then? That's the only... Oh, the, there's the viewing chamber, isn't there? There is. I'll go out the viewing chamber. Okay, so you both go in here. Mm -hmm. Um, That pedestal's like... I have to look again. It's like 10 or 12 feet up. Athletics to get up it, or just Mm. take my time? Disadvantage with your hand. Can Emil give me a boost? Probably. Um, Is is, is this the way out? Do we we need to climb up there? I don't know. There's either this or the direct stairs up. Okay. I don't know where this goes. Okay, um, I, it, and it's fairly smooth, polished stone. He's like, uh, should I? I suppose uh, I should give you a give you a boost then. Yeah, sure. Okay. I mean, he's a six foot tall guy, so once he's a six foot tall guy, and he lifts you up, I'm four and a half feet tall. Yeah, so. you can kind of look up and over, and you can tell that there are two nice thrones there, and there appears to be a curtain leading off into the back area here. All right, I'll tell him to wait there, and I will check it out. Uh, you you will not leave me, yes. No, I won't leave you. Uh, two large wooden thrones rest on this balcony. Behind the thrones hangs a red velvet curtain 30 feet long. The ceiling here is 10 feet high. Okay. I will look behind the curtain. Okie dokie. The room continues behind the curtain an additional 10 feet to a wall with a door at its center. I'll check the door. It opens, because why not? Oh, okay. Oh, sorry. Were you going to check for traps? Yeah. Okay. There are no traps. Cool. To be fair, I kind of thought you would go up the stairs. It might not be a bad idea to go this way, but I sort of assumed you would go up the stairs. The room is 30 feet square, rising to a 20-foot tall flat ceiling. A stone brazier burns fiercely in the center of the room, but its tall white flame appears to produce no heat. The rim of the brazier is carved with seven cup-shaped indentations spaced easily, e- evenly around the circumference. Within each indentation is a spherical stone twice the diameter of a human eyeball and made of colored crystal. No two stones appear to be the same color. Overhead, a wooden-framed hourglass as tall and wide as a dwarf hangs ten feet above the brazier, suspended from the ceiling by thick iron chains. All the sand is stuck to the upper portion of the hourglass, seemingly unable to run down into the bottom. Written in glowing script on the base of the hourglass is a verse in common. Two nine-foot-tall iron statues of knights on horseback, poised to charge with swords drawn, stare into deep, deep alcoves facing each other. The brazier sits between them. So does that description make sense? I think so. I've got these off a little bit. These guys should theoretically be right across from each other, so yeah. I think I'm off a little bit. But then you've got a brazier here in the middle that's producing flame, and then suspended above the flame is, an hour is a giant hourglass. But all the sand to the hourglass is in the top, is in the top, defying gravity. Yeah. And you can see some glowing words written on the brazier. Can I read them? Sure. As you approach the brazier, um, you see that the words in common say... Cast a stone into the fire. Violet leads to the mountain spire. Orange to the castle's peak. Red if lore is what you seek. Green to where the coffins hide. Indigo to the master's, to the master's bride. Blue to ancient magic's womb. Yellow to the master's tomb. Okay. You want to go back and do that again? Yeah, say that one more time. You want to write it down? It begins by saying, cast a stone into the fire. Violet leads to the mountain spire. Orange to the castle's peak. Red if lore is what you seek. Green to where the coffins hide. Indigo to the master's bride. Blue to ancient magic's womb. And yellow is to the master's tomb. And you know that uh, you see that there, like I said, there's sort of piles of stones all the way around this brazier, and you see that they are in order. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. 
Okay, I'm gonna get him. Okay, I'm gonna help pull him up. Um, <clears throat> let's. Um, how are you gonna do that? One handed. Okay. Uh, sure. Can I reach down and grab him, or? Um, let's. Uh, just roll me a, an athletics, or yeah, or strength. Fifteen. It's not pleasant, but you kind of get him up. You, you get a meal up there. Yeah. What did What did you find? I think I may have found a way out. You found a way out? Okay. Yes, let's... Show me, show me. What did you find? And I'll show him the brazier. This must be dark magic of Strahd. You think this is a way out? If this teleports to different places... He begins, he begins to read it. Fire, mountain spire, castle's peak. I do not care about the lore... Coffin's Hide, Master's Bride, Magic's Womb, Master's Tomb. Most of these sound treacherous. Yeah, but a mountain spire sounds like it might be outside. Perhaps. What do you know about the castle? What have you seen? Uh, I, 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 he, he goes on to describe it. It is, it is quite tall. There are several spires. There's a, uh, what do you call it, a, a battlement. Um, there are several, uh, oh, I don't know my castles. Um... There's some courtyards, and there's some terraced areas. There are... I, 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 I don't know. He sort of gives you a rough description. Okay. You've got sort of the inner keep, which is very large. There are a couple of towers that shoot way up. And then there, you know how you have some battlements going across. Right. He thinks there are several interior courtyards. He said there's two statues, two nine-foot statues of mounted knights. Yes. What do you think, Jeff? Not to play devil's advocate, but there are also some interesting uh, other options as well. You have lore, you have master's bride, you have magic womb. But as you ask Emil, he's like, you, you may be right. There are the the mountains, <laughs> the mountains. I, I but we are on a mountain. We are you know, you're, we are on the pillar of Ravenloft. So you're on a mountain, but there are many mountains, and anywhere is preferable to here. You think if we throw one of these. Violet stones then into the fire as it suggests. What if is it what if it is a trap? It may be. God, I'm gonna do something really stupid. <laughs> I can see it in his eyes, folks. He really wants to throw the red red one for lore. No, um, I don't. I'm gonna throw the yellow I'm one. I'm playing a hunch. Okay. How did those vampires get into Valley Key? I'm going to pick up the green stone, grab Emil's hand, and throw it. Okay. So you toss green? I toss green. And okay. I, I hope to God I'm not going to be surrounded by vampires. <laughs> so you toss oh green. Oh, my God. Tell me what I did. <laughs> I'm going to. <laughs> so you toss green. Um, it suddenly changes the color of the flame. So the flame goes from white to green. And as you look up, the sand begins running from the top of the hourglass to the bottom. But at the moment, nothing happens. Sand runs. It runs a little more. It's over halfway run. It falls. Let me make sure. It falls all the way down. You see all the sand fall all the way out. And so now all the sand is at the bottom of the hourglass. Oh wait, go ahead. Before it does, I'm going to lunge into the brazier. Okay. As you lunge into the brazier, I mean, I'm not going to like take a flying leap into it, but I'm going to reach out to it. Okay. And take. How much fire damage? Jesus Christ, what the f*** am I doing? <laughs> oh my god. Um, you realize as you touch the flame, it's it's actually quite cool. There's there's no... Oh. There's absolutely... God. There's absolutely no, uh, no heat on it whatsoever. So you touch the flame and suddenly there's an explosion of green color and your stomach retches and you feel nauseous and just when you think you're going to vomit... Sight pops back in, and you're falling. And you fall to take... Uh, let's add a little more in there. Take ten points of damage. Um, as you... You sort of... You fall, and you hit some things, and you bang, 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 and you fall down, and you, you're laying in a pile of... Soot? Like, you smell burning. Like, like old burning. Like, you know, something's been... Something was burned hours or days before, and now it's all sooty. 
and you sort of stand up and dust yourself off and you're in some sort of half destroyed building are you f-ing serious do okay do i recognize the place uh as you look around you do you were in this building a couple of days ago damn <sighs> <sighs> You appear to be standing in the coffin maker's shop in Valley Key. F- <laughs> what did I tell you? Two lefts and a right. Oh my god. Is Emil with me? I'm going to say no. No? Yeah. I'm gonna Even say though no. I grabbed him? Yeah. I'm going to say that you you dove in and tried to reach for him. He probably would have fought you. Okay. Because he definitely didn't want to know. He didn't want to go to where the coffins hide. <laughs> he was like, nope. F- that. You are standing in Valley Key. What'd you like to do, Jeff? <sighs> are you f-ing kidding me? God, I I hate this. I'm like, I'm so tense. I'm like crawling out of my skin. You survived. Uh, that's it. I'm back in Valley Key. You are. What would you like to do in Valley Key? I'm heading to the Blue Water Inn. You can head to the Blue what Water Inn. What the f- hell? Is it day? Is it night? Is it what? Um, so they got you back at night. There was some torture. There was some sleeping. We'll say it's probably evening time. Okay. And you head to the Blue Water Inn and you open it up and you see Erwin's there and he goes, uh, is it Davin, my friend? Are you, what has happened to you? You were hurt. Please come sit down. Let me, let me, let me help you. Let me, let me. Let me tend to your wounds. I, I'm, I'm, re- I'm really sorry. I am. <laughs> I, I will attest to Jeff's uh, audio here. Jeff is completely surprised. I think that he played a hunch, and the hunch was absolutely correct. Even though I tried to scare him away from it with a meal. <laughs> okay, I, I'm gonna let Irwin tend my wounds. Yep, uh, he'll. I'll, have- I, I will ask him where my friends are. Uh, we're going to have to play with this a little bit, Jeff, but you haven't been gone long. Either either this is the night that Corvus and everyone else is in the tower, or this is the day that they all left the tower. You see what I'm saying? Because basically, you guys got they got up early, marched to the lake, marched to the lake, did all the shit at the lake, spent the night, then parted ways with Esmeralda, right? Did they part ways, or were, did we end with them sleeping? I don't remember. I think they slept because they they met the lycanthropes at night, and then you escaped down the path. And I think it was the next day. So we're playing with a little bit of time here, but either they just left a day ago, or it's been another half day. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You're within a day and a half of our timeline. So theoretically, if that timeline is correct. Sure. Let's end the episode that way. That's fine. I'll connect it this way. He sits down to tend your wounds. Uh, you start talking to him, and you see uh, you see the door swing open. And you see an attractive woman with long black hair and a slightly darker complexion push the door in and says, Where is this? And she's like, Where is he? Where is Van Richten? Because Esmeralda's come hunting for him. <laughs> okay, so he told me his name, didn't he? No, no. The only the only time when he when he confronted us in the alley, and he told us to meet him at the ta- or go I to the tower. I don't think he ever said Van Richten. Okay, because I knew you guys were surprised when she asked who Van Richten was. Okay, I couldn't now, remember. That being said, she's a very argumentative, pushy individual. Yeah. So you're going to get filled in on the details. Okay. <laughs> So we can assume now that I, Davin knows where they've been for the last 48 hours and where they plan to go next. So the question is, what does Davin want to do? Davin needs to get resupplied and get on the road. Soul plate's probably done, though. Yeah, breastplate. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, breastplate. You could make it full plate. I'm perfectly <laughs> happy with that. So we need to get you resupplied. So... uh We'll get your armor. We'll get you... A- I'm going to have to ask Erwin for a loan. <laughs> he supplies it. There's no problem there. Okay. Um, you you have your sword, 
You have your short sword. Do you want... Uh, what all do you want? Honestly, I don't even think I can use that short sword. Oh, you can't? I don't think I'm proficient in it. I'm perfectly happy to hang on to it. You know what I think it is, Jeff? What? You keep waiting for me to drop the other shoe. Yes, I do. <laughs> You're very tense. You wake up. <laughs> like, you wake up in two feet of water. <sighs> inception. Yes. <laughs> I can't believe... I almost didn't go that way. You almost did not. Arguably, of all the ways you could have gone involving the least danger, that was probably it. There were there are other ways out. I was not kidding when I said there that you're at, at any point you're theoretically two turns from an exit, but that doesn't mean that that's an easy exit. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm all nervous and tense too. We built this up a lot for ourselves, I think, which is part of the problem. We were all like, oh my god, we're going to see the castle. And we saw a little bit of it. Short sword is a martial melee weapon. So I can't I can't even wield it. That's unfortunate. Yes, it is. It's a cool weapon. Can I use a shield with the stump? If you talk to the... If you talk to... If you go to the, the smith and talk to him about it, he can create a strap that will fit it. Okay. The hard part is, is that, again, you're, you're just going to... We're just going to have to toss disadvantages for things that you would need to hands. You know what I mean? Right. You go to grapple somebody. You go to fight somebody. Because it's going to take you a while to to not Let use your something. hand. But I would say you can strap something to it. Probably with a little bit of idea and foresight, you could, you could figure out multiple ways to still use that limb. Damn, that's a high-level spell. Corvus won't have that. <laughs> um, Only druids can cast regeneration. I can get a shield. Yes, that's no problem. I can get a warhammer. Yep. I can get hand axes. If you want them. You could get a full night's rest now, so you would get all your spells. Okay. Um, are you going to have someone craft you a holy symbol? I can do that. Are you going to see or talk to anyone else while you're in town? I would check in on the father. Um, father, it's Lucian, I believe, right? Yes. Father Lucian. Father Lucian's pretty f***ed up. I mean, his sister was murdered a couple days ago. The town is still in an uproar. It's still chaotic. No one's sort of taken the reins of power yet. Mm -hmm. Um, so he's happy to see you. I, no I notice a, a change in you, brother. You seem, you seem different. Beyond the obvious, you don't Stumpy have Stumpier, yeah. Yeah, beyond all that. I do not know what it is, but you are... I'm what? You seem blessed. <laughs> you have no idea how blessed I am. <laughs> um, Seems the Morning Lord has perhaps left his mark on you, then. I think you can say that. Um, I need you to do something for me. Yes, what can I do? I know that the last three days have been... An absolute hell for you. But I need you to pull your shit together. And I need you to be a leader to these people. Uh, persuade with advantage. That's a 20. That's okay. an at 20. <laughs> you can't get much better than that. Um, it, he seems to be... You've... You've incensed him. You, you know, he's... Yes, we must do this. This is our opportunity. This is what we've been waiting for. We can make the best out of this. This is what my sister would have wanted. They only ever wanted to rule these people well. I will show them that the church can provide the stability that they need. And he, as he's running around, he's, he's, he's got all these plans about how they can establish this, and you can establish this, and this will okay. be... Okay, I need you to watch out. I was told that there are... that your brother-in-law may not have been the worst option for leadership of this town. He nods. I, I get the idea that it was the Wachters that I was warned about. Oh, he, he nods. Yeah, I mean, you're talking about the second most powerful place, you know, family in the in the city. If you rally these people behind you, then you can you can lead them and you can get them to stand behind you. And I want this town to not be to not fall under another dark time. And I need you to do that because I can't be here to help you do it. He nods. Um in, in his fervor, if he's talking of everything, he turns and he says, "He, you see him. He 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 goes into the office and he pulls out sort of a a, a worn sort of sun medallion, 
and you see him, he, he can't help it, grew up doing Catholic stuff, so I always assume that there's holy water or some other things around, you know what I mean? He, you see him sort of sp- sprinkles it, and he prays, and he turns and goes to put it over your neck. Mm-hmm. Kind of stops halfway, like, whether or not you're going to let him put this over your neck or not. Is it a holy symbol? Yeah. Yeah. Let's say it's a holy symbol of the morning lord. And so he puts the holy symbol of the morning lord around uh, your neck. I'm still pretty sure that the morning lord is very related to Lathander. Davin would be. Davin feels the best he's felt since he's picked up that sword. This holy symbol feels good. And it feels right. You, you, that There's that connection. And it's a connection. Wow. And there's a connection in a way that there hasn't been a connection before. It's really? It's not the same. It's a different connection. Okay. Roll me, uh, roll me religion. And in fact, I was getting ready to say you can roll it with advantage because this is what you do. <laughs> Two fives in a row. Yeah, uh, that's a nine. If you you can't put your finger on it. Feels great though. Feels like a legit holy symbol that you can use. Okay. Is there any other business we need to tidy up? Uh, no, I need to rest, resupply, and get a horse if I can, and get on the road. Okay, so we'll assume that we you can get all that done in a relatively easy time. While Esmeralda is there, are you talking to her at all? Yes, yes. Is there anything you want to speak to her about? So she would fill you in. The werewolves, the ex- you know, her cart... Um, everything you now know about Van Richten, you know who he is, although she doesn't really want to pry it out of you. It becomes very obvious that you are the friend that they were talking about. Does she tell me about the portrait? How she was... Do you tell her her about escaping Castle Ravenloft? Yes. She also would talk about how she had been (laughs) inside the castle and that you must be... You must be fearsome indeed to have survived that. I think I was... Guided by a hand higher than mine. Perhaps, friend, perhaps. But you should be careful. That is not a that is not a comfortable place to walk. Yeah. Yeah, it wasn't. My chest is still thudding. <laughs> <laughs> um Okay, so she tells me about the, the portrait that looks like like Arena. She doesn't want to talk about it. So that's what I'm saying. If you if if there's a way in which it would come up in conversation, she might. Okay. But it's going to take some sort of skill roll or something. You know, well, I, I, mean? I wouldn't know to ask about it. You, right. That's what I'm saying. Okay. If you, can, if you can only sort of metagame your way to it, you can get to it. But I can't think of a way off the top of my head. She's. I think that Corvus and the, the other group would know she's angry anyway about um, Irina. So she doesn't want to deal with Irina. She doesn't want to even think about Irina being there. She's too okay. busy asking about Van Richten. I'll house. ask, was, is Arena okay? Was she there with them? You see her eyes narrow and they're full of fire and she just says, yes, she's fine. Why? What What did Arena do to you? She's not who you think. What do you mean? She is, if I had my way, she would be dead. Um, she's been bitten by the vampire. She would become one with the vampire. She'd be better off in a grave. She won't turn unless Strahd gets a hold of her again. We've been trying actively to keep that from happening. Well, you can only try for so much in this place. Yeah, but that doesn't mean we don't try. She shrugs. Ideological differences. Yeah. She thinks it's better to cut her head off. <laughs> she probably even thinks it's more humane. Yeah. Um, she asked about Van Richten and if you know where he was. Uh, no, he said he was leaving town. Told us to go check out the tower. Okay. So we've got all that business done. So yeah, you're going to be about a day and a half behind them. Okay. Now, the thing is, Corvus is going to try and get them to go to the winery, but I believe what would Esmeralda would probably tell them that the plan was to go to Kretsk, because I believe that was the plan. Because they don't even know about the winery, except yeah, perhaps in I did. passing. Corvus does. No, I, I told them about it. Okay. So, we'll try and sort that out. The only yeah. potential problem that I could see is that she can't tell them exactly where they went if they change their minds after they set out. Right. So, it's entirely possible... That Davin ends up at Kretsk. We may hand wave that if we can find a thematically appropriate reason for Davin to show up. Yeah. So if we get to that point, I will just say, Jeff, it is thematically appropriate. <laughs> okay. <laughs> or I will describe your character entering in some badass fashion. Yeah. You see a small dwarf in breastplate, you know, holding on to the reins of a horse as a war pony, probably. Yeah. 
holding on to the reins of a gelding as he swings a shield attached War to his pig. arm in the air. War pig. <laughs> so there you go. Davin survives. Perhaps through the hand of fate. Oh my god. Perhaps a god is out there looking for him. You didn't learn too much about the castle. I did not. I learned there's some kind of weird teleportation thing that'll go straight to, to I'm assuming Strahd's tomb. If he turns to vape, if we knock him down to zero and he turns to vapor, and we don't know where his tomb is. Maybe we can find that. Our title track, Nocturne, provided by Sleep for the Weary off their new album, Nocturnes. To find out more about Sleep for the Weary, check them out on iTunes, SoundCloud, Facebook, and at sleepfortheweary.com. Join in the brothel conversation on Facebook. Questions, comments, and suggestions can be sent to betweentwocrits at gmail.com. Like what you heard? Subscribe, share with your friends, and leave us a five-star review on iTunes. Most of all, keep circulating the tapes. Music